and welcome back down to Workbench. Today we're taking a look at this Craftsman Pro Series 1000 amp AC DC clamp meter. This is actually from Sears brand management and not from Stanley Black and Decker after the acquisition of Craftsman. Important piece to point out here, I think. And what drew me to this is the Bluetooth nature of this. And this has a sibling tool that I reviewed uh, that's also Bluetooth and runs off the same app. And that's the Bluetooth smart multimeter. And so let's take a look at what you get with this amp meter. This has a couple little uh, extra hidden gems in here, I think. So here's the package. If you look on the back and we look at the specs that are on here. It works AC DC, a 6,000 count LCD, uh, basic accuracy 2.8 plus or minus 2.8%, DC voltage and AC voltage to 600 volts, uh, amps up to 1,000, resistance 0.1 ohm to 60 mega ohms, uh, capacitance 0.01 microfarad to 600, I'm sorry, nano to micro, uh, has, does continuity testing, frequency 10 hertz to roughly uh, 20,000 hertz. Uh, has, it does inrush current, that's a big one for looking at startup. If you're looking at uh, larger items to see how much uh, current they're pulling on startup. Uh, diode testing also does thermometers. And this actually includes a temperature probe. So this actually comes with a two-year warranty uh, with proof of sale. Uh, I'm a little concerned about how that'll go, if Sears will last another two years or not, but the tool looks good, so it caught my attention. So let's open it up and see what we get. So the first thing is the sealed clamshell packaging. I've never been a big fan of that. Uh, before I get started here, uh, on the front here, so if I can get a nice close-up there, if that'll focus right, of the barcode that you can scan to go to the app store and get the app that goes with this. I'll show you what that looks like here in a moment on a tablet. So the first thing out of the package is the meter. Then as we take the cards here off, we've got our instruction manual. It's actually pretty good sized. And we also get a case inside the case, it feels like there's some goodies in here too. And so in here we've got a K to pronged uh, temperature adapter with a just a basic thermal couple. And we've got a set of very basic leads. And it looks like these do have some detachment there to the end. These leads are rated as uh, category 2 to 1,000 volts or 10 amps. So now if we look at the meter itself here on the back, there is a screw that calls for a 9 volt battery. So let's open this up and see what we get. There we go. And in here it comes with a GP Supercell, 0% mercury. I'm gonna to toss that aside and go with an Energizer Ultimate Lithium 9 volt. I think those are just better quality batteries. And so we'll go ahead and snap this battery in. We'll properly dispose of the one that came with it. It's nice they gave us one, but still, I on a battery that will actually last. I'm not a huge fan of no-name batteries. It's actually a pretty snug fit in there. It'd be nice if there's a little better screw keeper here on this. So work with a Phillips or a small straight bit. There we go. And so now here is the meter. We've got our dial here. We can turn this as it powers on. There's a nice backlit display here. You can see the little symbols in the corner to show you what the symbol is here. So we've got 600 amps or 1,000 amps. This is auto ranging. Temperature, showing out of limits. Let's just plug in the temperature probe.
like that. And this is showing me that the ambient temperature here is 80.9 degrees Fahrenheit. And let's see if we can flip this around. There we go, 27.1 Celsius, 81.1 Fahrenheit. We can plug in our leads. And with our leads, we can then test uh, down here as opposed to our non-contact, which is gonna be up here. So one of the other little features up here is there is this non-contact voltage detector that theoretically works off the front up there. So let's see how well that works. Okay, it's not beeping, but it's lighting up. If I put this near this outlet, let's see and see away, put it near and it lights up. Be nice if that would beep or have some option for that to beep, but that's a nice little feature there. So this opens up the jaw here to be able to check for our current clamp. And it looks like that that non-contact works even when it's in other modes. So most of these other features here are gonna require this tool to be, uh, to actually use the leads with the exception of the clamp up here. In my case, I'm not sure how much I plan on using this or anything else other than the basic clamp or the non-contact there. So a couple of things on this meter compared to its sibling. The sibling here is IP67 and waterproof. This one is not. This is a little less rugged. I think a lot of that has to do with the action on the clamp up here. Uh, eliminates the water protection, but there is still definitely a rubbery grip around the side here. And this dial is nice and rubbery to make this easy to rotate just with the, the use of your thumb in one hand. Or this could easily be operated one-handed, left-handed or right-handed. It's also interesting if you look at the leads, I feel like the leads that came with the actual multimeter are a little bit nicer leads that look like this compared to these slightly more traditional leads. But they appear to be rated very similarly, although these are rated up to uh, 10,000 volts as category three leads, and these are category two leads good for 1,000 volts. Both are rated for 10 amps, no big deal. And these both run on the same app on your phone or your tablet. One other little thing here to point out here, as far as I can tell, there are no fuses in the clamp meter to actually be able to uh, replace in the event that you blow something like you can on the multimeter, which is why it's probably a good idea to have this for most multimeter functions. And then I'm gonna be using this like almost exclusively for the, uh, the clamping functions up here. One other tool that you may want to go with this is something known as a line splitter. Because if we're going to use the clamp on here, we need to be able to actually isolate only one side of the circuit, either the positive or the negative. It doesn't actually matter. And so for most cords that are actually uh, connected all the way across, it's kind of hard to do that. And so this line splitter basically does is it separates out the lines on either side here. There's actually a couple of test points here in the red. You can stick your leads down to check the voltage if you've got some concern about that. This one is rated for up to 15 amps max. And so this has a one and a two X side. So the two X is just gonna simply, I'm sorry, the 10 X is gonna magnify the reading. Uh, this one here is made by X-Tech. I'm not sure exactly who makes the other clamp meter. So let's take a look at this in action. So for a quick test setup here, I've got my bench grinder plugged into the line splitter, plugged into the wall, just so you can see that this works. Let me turn on the light. See it coming there into frame. Let me back this up on the camera. We'll turn the light off. Then I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna click this in the lower amp setting here and put this around the, the one X value. Okay, with that set up here, here is the amp meter. I hope you can read, let me get that where you can read it. This is through the one X clamp. You'll notice that the reading will start high and then go down low. So this is just gonna be a regular startup with just uh, everything left alone, you can see a live reading as it starts up. Watch the value change. So 
So now as you saw that change, let's make one change to the setting. There we go. Now this is set on inrush, just with a simple hold. There's an inrush there, so this will get a high reading. Or what's that initial startup amperage of the bench grinder? So let's see if I can get this where you can read it. You can see we're on inrush, and I'm going to activate the bench grinder. And so that's particularly important. You know, if we look at what this bench grinder is rated here, this bench grinder here specifically is rated at 2.5 amps, but we saw by looking at the amp meters, it's definitely not that. And on startup, we're about 8.9 amps of inrush current for how much it needs to draw for the very first initial startup of the motor. So as you're trying to look at your electrical circuits, diagnose what's going on, you know, you might want to look at these different amperage specs to be able to see what you're trying to identify if there's something else that's going wrong, creating extra resistance, and therefore a change in the amp draw coming across. We know our voltage is going to be the same, and if we use this basic equation V equals IR, using this amp clamp can make our life a lot easier for trying to figure out exactly where our voltage problem is. And this, by having this all in one tool, saves me from having to actually plug in an amp clamp on the meter and have it set. And this goes much, much higher since you can, with the loop here, goes up to about 1,000 amps, whereas this is only good up to 10 amps is the max rating here. So definitely several orders of magnitude different, and that's why you might want the amp clamp. So to use the Bluetooth feature on the meter, we're going to obviously have to turn the meter on. Let's go up here to current. And then on the mode, we're going to hold on the yellow mode button here. And I'll put a Bluetooth symbol here in the lower left hand corner. So the Bluetooth on over here, we're going to tap on our smart meter app and it'll launch the app. And then the app will automatically turn, take care of the Bluetooth turn on for us. You can see it found the device. We'll tap on that. When you uh, launch yours for the first time, it, uh, I called mine Amp Clamp, but you can rename it to whatever you want to name it. Tap that, and you'll get to see whatever the current reading is over here, over here. And then as you adjust the dial, it'll change over here on the device. This is very similar to the same app that Southwire makes, the M app, if I'm pronouncing that correct. And it was actually interesting in the error codes I was getting in this app when I installed it on my Android tablet that with that did not have Bluetooth 4.0. The error strings all said craftsman.mapp, which I thought was interesting, indicating that indeed there is some definite overlap between this and the Southwire M app. One thing that's interesting on this compared to the multimeter is down here in the bottom, there's actually a tray. And this, let me go down and put this into temperature. I'm gonna plug in the temperature probe. and put this into temperature function here. And so you can see it shows the display here and here. But one of the things that this has that the multimeter does not is I can actually tap on here then remotely, essentially press the buttons that are here. So if I wanna change this from Fahrenheit to Celsius, boom, got it, no problem. All remotely via Bluetooth. If I wanna change this, if you wanna hold it, If you want to change it, whatever it is, you can do that. And that same function works for the other features. So if I put this over in amp mode, not quite sure why there's a quick little phantom reading there. I can simply change this here if I want. And relative, we can save our readings. We can take a screenshot with the little shutter button. And if I tap that, I'm sorry, I got to close the tray first. And then I can take the screenshot, give it a name. And then if I were to record a reading or a measurement that's being taken, and I stop it, I give it a name. I'm just going to call this one temp. And we'll save it. And if I open this up here and open my files, I call this one temp, which is this one right here. 
And then from here, I can edit this and then actually add a picture I can take with my cell phone. I could have added GPS coordinates if I had this set up. In the setup, you can also add GPS coordinates to it. Uh, you got some other options here under recording. This is important. You can change your sample rate. Uh, the quickest sample is 0.2. And then your duration, you want to sample for, you know, one minute for one hour. Looks like you can go all the way up to roughly 10 hours of sampling. Obviously, your battery life would have to permit that for whenever you set the recording to work. So you get all those options you can do remotely on your phone. So I can see this being a great uh, device. So if you're going to be probing some circuits in automobiles and you want to be sitting in your, uh, inside the driver's seat, commanding whatever it is on and off, you can actually see the reading live on your phone or your tablet if this is installed, if you install the app on a diagnostic tablet, you can see the reading remotely and be able to make some uh, quick commands on your amp clamp here. So I hope you found this video useful and interesting on the Craftsman Pro Series 19745 ACDC True RMS amp clamp or clamp meter. Uh, one final tidbit here I neglected to point out earlier is this is a true RMS or uh, root mean square calculation. So rather than just taking a straightforward averaging, it'll take the root mean square and then calculate the average reading uh, based on that method rather than just a straight line averaging, which works far better if you've got non-sinusoidal waveforms. So I hope you found this video useful and interesting, and have a great day. Bye.